Hello again, and this is a new video. Today we're going to talk about the online payments in Power Pages. Now, this is a feature that just was released the last uh, couple of days. It uh, is in preview, and like all preview features, you shouldn't use it in production. And in this case, you can't actually use it in production because it's only configured to talk to the Stripe developer test environment. Um, but let's still go through the, the process to set this up and how it all works. And we'll talk a little bit about PCI DSS compliance as well, because I know that's a common question that comes up when building some of these uh, payment uh, online payment gateways. Now, in the past, what we've had to do, a pro developer would have to go in, look at the API for the particular payment gateway provider and build a custom interface in order to integrate that with Power Pages. And they'd have to consider a lot of things, of course, security and compliance but how that's built um, using a lot of other technical things, probably using the OAuth implicit grant flow and those types of technologies. This feature, however, it only uses Stripe currently. I'm not sure, hopefully they're gonna add other providers in the future, but it actually is a very quick and easy way to configure a payment gateway with Power Pages using basically a no code method. So let's take a look. So first thing we're going to do is I've set up a Power Pages site and I'm going to go into the edit that um, into the design studio. And this is just using one of the standard templates, which is fine. Next thing I'm going to do is going to the setup area and then we're going to go into the integrations and there we're going to choose the external apps. Now you remember from a previous video, we configured DocuSign. Here I'm going to install Stripe and this is going to take a few minutes. It's going to load some solutions into our Dataverse environment and do some other configuration. So you're going to get these keys from the Stripe dashboard. Now you can set up a Stripe developer account. You can sign that up for free. You go to the Stripe website. I'm not going to show you mine because I have a lot of sensitive information there, but we're going to get the secret key and the publishable key and we're going to be able to set that up in our when we enable our stripe configuration so the other thing we're going to do is we're going to go into our data workspace and of course the first thing we're going to do is make sure we're going to configure that to one of our solutions that we're going to set up in we would have set up already in our solutions area this makes sure that any changes we make to dataverse will be reflected there i'm going to create a brand new table i'm going to collect donations so let's create a donations table um, the primary column, let's just change that to like a donation number just to make things a little bit, a uh, little bit more, you know, easy, way to, easy way to track some of this stuff. Uh, I'm going to go in the advanced options. I'm going to change it from business required because what I'm going to do is I'm going to configure this to be a, um, an auto number field. And that way we can know that we could maybe for generating receipts uh, for tax purposes, those types of things will have a unique number being generated. So I'm just going to go into that and modify that a little bit further. I'll change it from a text, actually, sorry, from a single line to an auto number, uh, give it an appropriate prefix, uh, like RCT for receipt, that's fine. We're gonna save that. And then the other thing we're going to add is a column to um, basically um, find out what the donation amount is. Now, this is going to be a currency field um, so we're going to switch that to insert currency. A lot of interesting things happen when you set up a currency field and maybe we'll do a video on that in the near future. Um, we set up this and maybe the other thing, we're just going to collect a name. At this point, we're just going to put in a text field for the name. Obviously, we would probably want to link that to an account record. Um, that's going a little bit above and beyond today. I'm trying to keep this just very short and simple. Um, once we've got the, the donor name and the, the donor amount, we really don't need much more information just for purposes of the demo. Of course, you'd probably want to collect a lot more information um, on doing that. Now, because we're going to set up a multi-step form, we're going to have to set up a couple forms that we're going to use for the multi-step form. And so the first one, I'm just going to move the owner field up into the header, which I normally like to do. Uh, we're going to make the donation number read only because it's going to be generated by the auto number. We're going to add the donation amount and the donor name, and that's going to be our first form in our step. So that's all good. But now we're going to need to also create a second form, and this is going to need to be just a payment form because we're going to need a form where it's going to embed the Stripe payment gateway. Um, so basically, I'm just going to call this payment. Now, even though we're not collecting any information on this particular form, we're still going to want to add a few components. Um, I'm just going to display the donation number. I'm going to make the rest of these read only 
Therefore, the end user, when they actually hit that page, they'll see that information they entered in the previous step. Um, we'll save and publish that form. Again, this is using the model-driven form designer. Um, we've talked about that in previous videos about how the forms you create in Power Pages uses the model-driven or the Dataverse forms. Uh, once that's done, we're going to go and basically create a brand new page. Um, I'm just going to call that donations. Um, it could be even on an existing page. We're just going to use that blank template. We're going to add the multi-step form to this particular page. Let's give it a good new name. Donations. And then what else? Um, now we're going to need to add our steps. First step we're going to add is the one where we're collecting the name and the donation amount. So I'm just going to call that uh, donor information. Um, again, what table, the donation table that we've set up um, using the data workspace. And of course, the form, we're going to pick that first information form. So that's the first one. Also make sure that it's creating a new record. I think that's by default. So we've got that. Now we're going to want to add our second step here. Um, the other thing we need to add is, of course, is table permissions. Now I am allowing this to be uh, updated by anonymous users. We can take anonymous donations. However, we probably want to stick it just to authenticated users in a real production scenario. Um, we're having it, the permissions to create the record. We're probably going to want to add some additional information like update. So I'm just going to update this here. Of course, it's going to give us some warnings. Of course, we're aware of that. Now, the next thing, now that's configured. We're good with our permissions. We're going to want to add another step. So of course, we'll just go into the add step. And this is going to be our payment step. This is what's going to display the credit card form. So we're going to choose this. And then once we go, we've configured it. Now I'm going to go into step settings and we're going to go into app integrations. And now notice the enable digital payments is grayed out. So this is something that I ran into. And what I need to do is actually um, after you enable the Stripe integration, and it is in the documentation, and I missed that step, is to hit the sync button. So you're going to need to hit the sync button. So I'm going to go back and do that. All right, so I've hit the sync button. Now I can enable digital payments, just in case you run into that. Choose a donation amount. It's going to need that currency field on our multi-step form. We're going to click OK. And now that we actually, we see we have that credit card form embedded there uh, on our page. Again, we're going to have to update some permissions here because we're going to need the read permission um, in order to view some information. So good thing the multi-step form reminded me of this. It's kind of a nice feature. We're going to save that. And now we should be good. Now, the thing I ran into, it didn't work for me the first time. I had to restart my whole website. So in order to do that, you would go into the Power Platform Admin Center, pick your um, portal and hit restart site. Now, this will take a few minutes. And this was uh, something I had to do in order to make sure that payment integration appeared on my actual portal. So anyways, once I've done that, we... Um, other thing we want to do is make sure we turn off the display back button because we don't, once we, the users enter in the credit card info, we don't want them to go back into the process. So let's now preview this. We're going to preview that. And we're going to select the donation page and put it in amount, let's say hundred bucks. That's a good donation amount. What you think? Sure. And then uh, of course, put in my name. Again, this is a simple string field. Probably if we did the authenticated user, we could have that pre-filled um, using metadata. And now we hit processing. This now will take us to our next page where we're going to see that credit card form embedded. Um, so I'm going to go in. I'm going to put in a fake credit card number. Um, if you put in a real one, it's going to give you an error, actually. Um, we'll put in an expiration date, a CV fee code. This can all be fake numbers here. I'm just going to put in a fake postal code. Again, we're just testing. It's hitting the Stripe testing site. We hit pay now. And then we're going to get um, a message that our payment was successfully processed. Now, the other thing that it's going to do, if we go into the data workspace back in the design studio, there is a payments table. So it is going to track information back from Stripe into our payments table. We could take a look at that. Probably the best thing to do is build a model-driven app to view that. We can take a look at this and we're going to see the payment identifier and some other information. So this is good in order to reconcile the payments that you would see in your bank account from your Stripe integration. Or if it didn't work, then maybe give your users an option to try something else.
So I didn't talk too much about PCI DSS compliance. I did a little bit of a write up on my blog, corresponding blog post around that. But basically the core thing about how this works is um, the integration actually doesn't touch anything really on Power Pages or Dataverse. So no credit card information is passing through that. Think of it like um, you're getting one of your friends to collect money for you. Now you're not touching the money. Your friend collects the money, puts it in the bank account for you, and just lets you know that that money's been collected. That's pretty much how this process works. So in terms of your Power Pages site being PCI compliant, um, it is compliant because you're actually hitting the Stripe site directly. Still, it's good to read up on that. Make sure that you're not doing anything that violates that. Just understand the rules. Um, if you do want to go deeper and build your own custom payment integration where you're storing that information, that's where you're going to need to get your site verified with PCI compliance and go through a whole bunch of auditing and things like that. It's a pretty cumbersome process. So this is why these payment gateway providers that provide an interface that lets your users basically talk directly to them, even though it's kind of embedded in your existing website is an ideal solution. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you find this feature uh, pretty exciting. I'm not sure when it's going to be a GA, but I can already think of a lot of use cases for it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.